I'm Travis Baer. I'm a lecturer in Molecular Biosciences at Imperial College London. My lab works on the applications of synthetic biology, so we're very interested in doing useful things with biological systems. Up to now, life has evolved, and now we actually have the ability and the power to engineer it, to design it. And so I'm curious about what the natural world is going to look like in the future. So synthetic biology is sort of the next level of genetic engineering. So about 40 years ago, we, being scientists and engineers, uh, developed the techniques to basically move pieces of DNA from one organism to another. And this was sort of done by physically cutting and pasting. Now we're moving beyond that where we can write DNA. So we're no longer limited to the pieces we can cut from one and put in another. We can chemically synthesize this DNA on a machine and put that into an organism. And now we can even create new organisms completely from scratch. So if you imagine a cell that's programmed to make a useful compound, say a material or a drug, then what you have is basically a micro scale manufacturing unit. It's basically a cellular factory. And the cool thing about a cellular factory is that when you want more factories, you let that cell grow and divide. So in, in the lab, if we have one bacteria, we put it in a, in a flask, the next, night, the next day we come in, we have millions, if not billions of bacteria. So right now, it's possible to synthesize a gene which is a few thousand base pairs for uh, a few hundred dollars. Um, and at that, at that cost, you know, we can do bacterial genomes on the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Projecting forward, what we expect in the next few years is to be able to synthesize a gene, which is a couple, couple uh, thousand base pairs, uh, for the order of $10 or $50. Um, what we're expecting for genomes is on the order of thousands of dollars. So this becomes well within the realm of your average academic research lab or industrial research lab. What we know is that this will make academic and industrial research much faster. And you'll find more people from different academic disciplines coming into life sciences. The sort of unpredictable part is who else will be involved in this. So if, if it's possible for me as a, as a private citizen to get, have, a, have a genome synthesized for a few thousand dollars and I'm a sufficiently motivated hobbyist, will I start doing this? And really, at that point, what we need is design tools. So we need to be able to basically have uh, interfaces where people can, on a laptop or on an iPad, design their biological system, their organism, um, you know, over a cup of coffee in the morning and have that sent out for synthesis and the next day get it back. In terms of the next 10 to 15 years, we can imagine, we, we know that it's going to accelerate the pace of research, fundamental research and applied research in academia and industry. If we start thinking what could be possible, there's this whole idea of distributed manufacturing, basically have an at-home uh, setup, a lot like making beer or wine at home. Plenty of people make yogurt and, and, and things like that at, at home, and those contain living cultures. So really, if you can imagine, a, an engineered probiotic um, could be designed that would do things like enhance your, your mood, enhance um, certain brain functions at given times. And what's really going to limit this is going to be the creativity of people doing it and their willingness to experiment on themselves. The inevitable part for business and for industry working in this area is that doing biological research is going to become faster and it's going to become cheaper. And so not only are academic labs going to be doing this, but any company's competitors are as well. Looking forward 10 years, 20 years and beyond, I mean really what you could imagine is sort of a, an architecture of, a, of an urban environment that, that's much more living, that is responsive to the environment, uh, that is capturing energy, capturing water, um, capturing nutrients in some way and basically delivering those to the occupants of the building. I mean, maybe what, what we're imagining here is sort of a convergence between the living world and the technological world, where at some point, because we're engineering the living world, we, we really won't see a difference. We won't consider a difference between life and technology.